everybody, this is Darren Redden for Redden's Wrap-Up, brought to you by FHT Sports. And we are in uh, the press box at the Selling Arena uh, with some very special guests. You know their voices. You know Nick's voice for the last two years if you're a Fresno Monster fan. This is Nick and Wayne. And gentlemen, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thanks, Darren. Excellent. No, I appreciate the, the time. And what I want to do is we'll talk a little bit about tonight's game. Tonight's game really had a lot of um, importance in terms of, of not being an official slump. Because you lose three games, and there's one turning point, let's just wrap up, there's one turning point that I wanted to talk to you both about. And that is at the beginning of the second period. This team came out about as flat as a tie with a nail in it. And they let a couple quick goals. Uh, but what do you think turned it around? I, I think honestly it was the play of that third line of uh, Rangheed, uh, Holguin, and Tristan Baker. You get two Fresno kids on that line. And they played, they played great all series long. That's the one line that really has been, you know, cooking for these guys all season. Mm -hmm. uh, Rangheed, I, I don't think he's had an off game this whole year. He's just one of those guys who's going to bring it every single night. And Jonathan Holguin, that's a guy who also, too, you know, came into this season as, you know, anticipating to be, you know, a depth forward, a bottom six guy, you know, like a mm -hmm. fringe fourth liner type back, of deal. Backbencher. And, yeah, like a backbencher. And he's come out and he's starting to prove now that, you know, hey, I can... I can add some real value to this team. So Johnny Holguin just looked pretty good. He had a couple shots today. And then Tristan Baker, too, youngest kid on the team, but he's an absolute gamer. Mm -hmm. um, he, you know, he always gets in on the floor check. He's dumping pucks in. He's got some good speed, especially for his size and his age. And, you know, that line looked real good tonight. And they provided really a lot of energy. Phil Popoff and uh, Velasquez both with five points on the night. Uh, from what you guys see with this team specifically, just w w with what you know about hockey, when you got a guy like Velasquez comes in, and uh, he's coming, he works with Truex in the past. Truex might be aging now for a long period of time. Um, how long does it take for something like that to to uh, shine and look like he's been playing here forever? Yeah, I mean the way Velasquez has come in and uh, the way he plays with Peter Filipov, they both have a really similar play style. They both like to use different variations of moves to get by guys, and a lot of a lot of the kids in this league are at the point where they're not quite there yet. But when you get a guy like Velasquez, pair him with Filipov, these guys look like they've been playing for years together, but because of their similar play style, they just mesh so well and so easy. So it comes naturally to them, really. And this top line really carries the offense here. There's, there's a lot of lines that, that can grind it out and get you some time in the offensive zone. But these guys, when they're on, it seems like every time they're together or out there, they're making something happen, and that's how they get the wins here in the Southern Arena. Yeah, you know, um, there's a lot of things that are never on a score sheet, and, and I think two of those big things tonight were killing off the five-minute penalty. Mm -hmm. You know, if you guys could just kind of talk about that, because I thought that was unbelievable. And even though they, uh, that um, the Blazers scored on another power play uh, that they had, uh, Fresno was down two men, and Demangalo was playing without a stick for most of that time. Yeah, yeah. So we want to talk about their, their penalty kill. It was pretty spot on tonight. Yeah, um, you know, special teams is you know one of the things that they pride themselves on. Mm -hmm. um, and you know they, they, they work on it all the time. Kaminsky's always working on the power play in practice. They're always working on the penalty kill. And you know, uh, just during this game, just to touch on the, the five minute, you know, that, that's one thing where your captain goes away for five minutes, right, off of what was, uh, I would say, I, it was, uh, the call had to be made, but I don't think it should have been five minutes this week, personally. I agree, it was ticky-tack. It was a little bit ticky-tack, in my opinion. I think it was just a collision play at the point. I mean, from my experience playing in this league, that happens all the time. I mean, it's just, it is what it is, though. But uh, anyway, just kind of elaborate on my point. One of the point I'm trying to make is, you know, that, that right there, you know, Goals can change momentum, hits can change momentum, and so can penalty kills, good penalty kills. And that was a penalty kill there where you know, the Blazers, they did not, I think they only registered two shots on goal in five minutes. Fresno actually had three shots on goal on that power play, or on that, yeah, on, on Bellingham's power play. And it was, uh, it was one of those things where, you know, it's just, you get the crowd into it, guys are blocking shots, you know, guys are making hits in the corners, they're just digging pucks down, and and you know that that really got the whole bench behind that really got the bench behind the rest of the guys and, and it seemed that that really got the crowd into it too. I've also noticed too just going to Fresno's penalty kill which by the way 
I haven't seen a team's penalty kill in this league so far that I don't think has been as good as Fresno's. They have so many line combos that they can switch out. But it seems like in games where, at least here, when me and Nick are here in the building calling it, when they have a few of those penalties where maybe it's a double minor or a five minute, or they go on three, four PKs in a row, which sometimes happens. Oh, yeah, sure. We have a lot of penalty minutes here in Fresno. But when that happens, <coughs> oh, good after, luck. <laughs> definitely call back me. But when that happens, uh, we always seem to take that momentum from those kills, and we usually end up winning those games, which, you know, you don't see happen very often. You don't see teams winning taking four straight minor penalties. Like, you, it, it's not very often, but this team feeds off of that energy. And uh, I think one guy who really comes to mind for this penalty kill is Michael Gomez. Yeah. That yes. guy is incredible when it comes to penalty killing and talking to him a little bit about it. That's what he prides himself on. Uh, that's what his bread and butter is. He, he loves being out there for penalty kills. And when you have players like that, it makes it so much, it makes your kill so much stronger. Yeah, one, one last question before I kind of uh, let you guys go. You guys, it's been a long night. Um, between now and the trading deadline, it has it been your experience that the players tighten up or do they get loose wondering how that's going to be, especially when you're in a position that you're in? Uh, well, from experience, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, to preface this, uh, I when I was playing my one season down in San Diego, I actually was almost traded. I got a call from my general manager at about 9.20 in the morning on mm -hmm. the day where we had practice. And you know, nobody gets a call from your GM at 9.20 in the morning unless you know, something's going down, right? So, but he called me up. He, he actually was he actually asked me because it was, uh, it was uh, the Arizona Hawks who inquired about me. And uh, I just, I, I, was, I was given an option, which is nice, but a lot of times, you know, guys in this league, you're not given an option, you know, whether you're gonna be traded or not. So I think, uh, for me personally, I think it depends a lot on who it is, but, um, you know, it, for certain guys, it can, for certain guys, it can help them play better. Because, mm -hmm. you know, they want to say either, you know, look at this, this is what you're gonna lose, or, you know, this is, you know, don't trade this, you know what I'm saying? You want to make yourself more valuable. Some guys, it may tense you up a little bit, but I think for the most part, you know, that that's that's more few and far between than anything else. I think most guys just tend not to, to really worry just about it. Just kind of block it out. Yeah, you just try and block it out. That's that's really the best thing to do, unless you're able to use it as positive motivation. But otherwise, I would say just block it out. Yeah, and I think, I think that goes for all players in all leagues is you, you can't sit there and think about it, otherwise it will affect your play. And, um, but at least in this league, I think for a lot of guys, uh, you know, a lot of people are coming in from Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a lot of guys from out, you know, out of different countries. And I think for them, it's kind of a culture shock getting moved around so much. So I feel as though, you know, they don't really want to get traded. You know, they appreciate to stay where they're at. But then in the case like Velasquez, you know, coming over from where he came from, now he gets an opportunity to play with a team who is looking like a, a lock for the playoffs, who has that ability, has that talent to make the playoffs. Some guys, um, they get this good opportunity from a trade and they can build off of it and, and make you know a name for themselves somewhere else. Yeah, definitely. That's true. So gentlemen, I, I wanna thank you both. And um, it is not hyperbole when I say that this is the best uh, combo that you're gonna hear uh, um, anywhere, especially in WSHL. Um, they should be in the NFL, meaning not for long at this level. I see them going higher. Uh, I've been around, you know, quite a bit. You know, New York, now out California here, 12 years. Uh, listen to them on uh, bdhockey.org. Correct. Uh, bdehockey.com. Bdehockey.com. A little plug for Andy and his crew. No, absolutely. That's what it's about. Is iron shop and iron. We all get better. Uh, so listen in. Thursday, the Stanley Cup is here. There's no excuse for you not to be here. Uh, get your photo with it, and then um, come on out. Let's pack this place on a Thursday night. It is weekend eve, so make sure you make let that happen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. It's been great. Thanks, Keep everybody. listening. It's and, oh, yeah, absolutely. Be well, gentlemen. Bye now. told us to do something with the camera or something like that. I don't I know.